different game now, mama. Welcome to this latest edition of the Real Deal Pop Podcast. Excuse me. As I continue to look back at the hit series Snowfall, we are now up to Season 3, Episode 4, The Game That Moves As You Play. This, of course, is Episode 930 of the Real Deal Podcast. A quick recap before we get into the episode. Andre strikes back. Teddy and also bury a problem. And Franklin sends a message. Themes moving with the game. Um, so this episode, you had a number of characters. I, I mean, the title, the game that moves as you play. Of course, Franklin echoes this to Sissy early in the episode, basically telling her that, you know, he's moving different. And we see a number of our characters, Franklin, also, and even Teddy, have to kind of shift how they're moving as things occur and have to make quick decisions or decisions on the fly, particularly Franklin and Oso. We saw Oso did actually do that. It happened with Oso in the last episode when he shot Lorena uh, without, you know, without receiving any warning from Teddy that she was going to be the new contact. And then we see Oso, of course, connect, reconnect with his brother for obviously some business purposes, uh, from some business purposes uh, moving, you know, moving forward. So, some of our characters, and you know Andre, you know you can make a case for Andre as well in terms of um, what his actions with the uh, police department, so, which we were certainly getting getting into. So a number of our characters are moving uh, along, uh, are moving within uh, this game, this dangerous game that they're in, whether they're in law enforcement or in the drug game, or if you're Teddy Teddy McDonald, and also with the government. And that and, and that whole deal, uh, the deep dive, the LAPD versus the Saint organization. So we're gonna look at this from a couple standpoints. First, the scene. So you have a scene. Uh, it's a montage, which uh, was uh, a musical montage with George, the, the great George, uh, not George McDonald, uh, Michael McDonald, playing with the song. Of course, the classic song. I, I keep forgetting. And basically, the LAPD uh, takes out all of Franklin's, uh, attacks Franklin's entire organization, um, takes in a number of drugs and guns and what have you. Uh, during his montage, we see him taking uh, fat, the rest fat back. We see them bust in Louis and Jerome's house as they're having sex and almost, you know, almost killed Jerome after he punched a cop. So they, you know, this was obviously a personal attack um not only from from the standpoint of this you know this is a lot a lot of something had to do with with andre and what he you know what he's trying to accomplish against uh frankly but the bottom line is this has kind of been the history of the lapd um you look at organizations they've, they've had a number uh they've had a number of organizations over the history of the lapd LAPD uh, in terms of having a militaristic type, you know, movement as far as like groups like Crash, which was an anti-gang unit that started in like 79 and ran through like, you know, up until like 2002. And there's been, you know, you can do the, the research on your, you know, on your own time. Of course, there's been a number of uh, corruption uh, cases in, in, in history within the LAPD uh, in general. And, you know, you look at this scene uh, and look at some of the language that was used during, not only this scene, but during this episode when with the cops talking about Franklin and talking about his organization. I mean, you had one cop, Nix, who almost choked uh, Jerome to death, basically, you know, call him, you know, say, you know, tell, say to Andre, hey, I can't, you know, at least you're one of the good ones. I can't believe that you live amongst those, uh, you know, those animals. Um you heard you hear the term, you know, thugs used. Uh, so the, listen, this has been going on since the beginning of time. We we talked about this in pod, past podcasts about slave patrols, about how police departments would, you know, the the origin stories of of how police departments were formed and organized. Is this has been going on forever? 
And there is not a more notorious police department in the country than the LAPD. Like this, the LAPD. So I, I thought the show, you know, how the show depicted the LAPD was pretty much on point throughout the course of the entire run of the, of the series. And of course, you see again during this particular scene, you know, now, yeah, Jerome did punch a cop and uppercut him after the after the cop after one of the cops put hands on Louis, which probably in, in today's in 2023 probably would have got him killed. Um, but this again, this sets off the scene basically sets off an entire, you know, us versus them type mentality as far as the community um versus the police, whether and, you know, part of the community during that particular time, of course, were, you know, you had drug kingpins and drug organizations that were created, uh, like like with the Saint organization, Franklin Saint that were created because drugs those communities in LA and other communities around the country, of course, were flooded flooded with crack and cocaine. And there was, you know, you know, and that's and that's how this was uh part of this was created. So um uh, we'll talk we're, we're gonna talk about we'll uh, talk about this some more as we as we talk about the best scenes. But uh in this particular scene, this uh you know, this the, the Andre uh versus Franklin, the LAP versus the uh Saint organization goes to an it goes to another level because now uh you know choke Jerome out you you take on you know you you take a, a number of his businesses not businesses but you, you crack down on his uh you take a number uh, they were able to get some uh cocaine and some stuff some drugs and stuff uh cocaine also guns uh from franklin so now you know franklin he knew this before but now he knows you know how personal this is uh, and you know we see Louis later on in this episode say you know we got to you know you, we got we have to deal with Andre like this is you know this is Andre so clearly uh, the gauntlet has been set has been thrown down by one Andre and the LAPD uh, versus uh, Franklin Saint and his uh, family and organization as a whole. That scenes uh, Teddy Oso and Mariella. This is, of course, following the killing of uh, of Lorena. Um, Teddy basically says, "Look, I no, she basically she couldn't be trusted, and she this is something that had something that had to happen. You gave me no heads up in terms of the fact that she was now a part of our organization." Um, Mary uh, Mariella. So Teddy, of course, is taken back and, of course, is not happy by Oso's move to kill uh, Lorena. And he says, hey, you, you know, you're going to help me bury the body and, and and what have you, and then you'll get your money once it's done. And Mariella basically says, and this is one of the very few times in this whole entire series that you see someone have leverage against Teddy, because normally Teddy is, you know, three moves ahead from that standpoint and has most, if not all of the, of the leverage when he's has when he's facing off against someone in, in a power play. But Mary Ellis says, look, no, you're going to give me my money um, because I have the land and the routes that you need. So it's a case of she, he actually, she actually needs, he actually needs her more than she needs him. So that, so he, so she says, "Hey, this is not my problem. You fix it. I'm, I'm, I'm going about my business." And Teddy and Oso are, for, are of course, forced to take care of um, Lorena's body. And we saw we we see that take place during uh, uh, the you know the latter part of this episode. Melody and Andre at the gun range. Uh, a, this is a very very important scene. A lot of foreshadowing uh, going on in this scene as Andre is teaching Melody how to shoot. Melody, you know, so I misspelled Melody. That's not how you spelled the, the character's name. Um, Melody um, is questioning her dad and what he does as far as being a cop. This was, of course, this scene was followed. This scene followed uh, them raiding uh, Jerome and Louis' house, and of course, almost killing Jerome and, and breaking up, breaking up all this shit in their house. So Melody basically says, 
you know, I thought you were, you know, did this job to protect our community and protect our people. Andre, of course, is making the case that these are not good people. They chose the wrong side of the fence, so to speak, or the wrong side of the law, so to speak. And uh, this is kind of those consequences. And then she questioned him about why didn't he stop uh, what happened to Jerome? And he basically, uh, you know, didn't have much to say after that. Um, he's conceded that, you know, her and Franklin are going to see each other. Uh, he basically said that when he says that, you know, I know you two are close and nothing I can't nothing I can't do about that. But, you know, he's basically also telling her that this is how it's going to be um, moving forward in terms of, you know, what has to happen uh, to, to take down their organization. Uh, again, we're a great scene um, as she's teaching her how to shoot. The whole, you know, father-daughter dynamic is there. I mean, you know, despite the, the you know, despite... Uh, you know, you, you can tell how close they are, but you know, she does question him and does bring about some good points. Some good points about you know him as a cop, especially as a black cop, standing pat as a bunch of white cops beat the hell out of a black man and almost choke him to death. And you know, we see this run rampant in the police department, um, uh, where. Where you have black cops who stand pat as something like that is going on for much less than what uh for for much less than what uh Jerome did to that cop. Like for much less. Um and you know, you question you can question uh you we I I just wonder, but we can also wonder about the mentality that goes into that. If you're a black cop and you're seeing another You've seen another gang of white cops and what have you attack other African Americans, men and women, and we've seen we've seen a number of these situations uh, take place, especially over the course of this la of, of the last you know five to ten years, as social media has become bigger and and everything seems to be on videotape, and you want to again, the, I mean, the easy answer is you know th there is a you know a blue line that seemingly these cops will not, not be willing to cross. Like they, you know, it's not about black. They don't see, they don't, the color they see is blue. So it's not about their fellow, you know, fellow African-American and what have you. Uh, so that, she she really tackled that um, and questioned that in terms of Andre. And really, it really in a way, in many ways, called Andre out uh, from that standpoint uh, about that, him being a, a black man and seeing it, Again, uh, another black man being attacked, and I'm not doing anything about it. Um, Louis Franklin, Leon, and the rest of the crew. Uh, uh, so this is again following all the raids. Uh, Franklin, for the most part, is is happy because no one snitched. Um, he gives this speech about, listen, we take it. We're gonna get more lookouts. We're gonna, you know, change some things up. Um, but what happened in the cookhouse? They shouldn't have been able to find. They shouldn't have been able to find the cookhouse that easy. He questions one of the leaders, one of the guys who is probably was was running the cookhouse, and basically the guy said, "You know, y'all must have fucked up because you know, and we were on point with the stuff we were doing." And clearly, we saw at the beginning of the episode they had girls in the cookhouse. There was loud music in the cookhouse. They kind of were not as focused as they as they should have been, and which Franklin, of course, him being him being Franklin Saint uh was was able to find him was able to pick up on this he knocks the dude down pistol whips the dude uh leon and fatback proceed to beat the dude up and then franklin shoots the dude uh to send a clear and direct message that these type of mistakes will not be tolerated within his organization again he doesn't pull the trigger leon pulls the trigger but they, they know that, you know, Franklin, of course, is, is the top dog in that, in that organization that calls the shots. Um, so, you know, they, he might as well have had pulled the trigger from that standpoint in terms of the kind of how quiet that room got once that, um, once Leon pulled that trigger. And again, this is part of Franklin's evolution as a leader. Um, you see, you know, he kind of was not all over the place. He was all over the place in a good way in this episode as a leader. 
You see him kill the dude uh, in one scene. You see him uh, kind of, uh, you know, we know Leon, him and Leon are tight, but they hadn't spent a lot, they, they seemingly hadn't spent a lot of time together as far as just kicking it. You see him, you know, spend, spend a night with Leon uh, as they go, you know, do some teenage stuff with chasing girls and Melody and go skate. So, and, you know, so, so you see him do, kind of keep people within at bay and we'll also know how to kind of you know keep people keep people happy and loyal uh so we saw that we, we saw franklin uh, as a leader you know in his bag as far as him being able to manipulate situations and not so much he manipulating leon but him being able to be one hand you know jovial and kind and and and, and you know caring but on the other hand as cold as ice as it as it was the case with this particular uh scene. Franklin and Alton. Now this is this is near the end of the episode, right before uh Leon, excuse me, right before Franklin is, is about to send Melody off as she's trying to get him to uh convince him to quit uh the drug game. Um Franklin Jerome is coming home. He is home. He's limping. He's in bad shape. He's bright, he's beaten up, can you know, barely walk even though he refuses help from uh, Leon or Fatback. And, uh, you know, Jerome, and how prideful he is, he wanted to walk into his house on his own accord. And Franklin is hot. And you can, this is great acting by Damson Ildris because he's, he's visibly upset without, like, moving, without, with minimum body movement. But you can see the body language. You can see his face. You can see it in his eyes. Alton, of course, being his father, knows, you know, knows his son. and basically says, hey, you know, I know what you're thinking. You want, you know, you want to go for the gun. You want to go directly for revenge. I know after seeing something like this, but you can't, man, you you cannot shoot a cop. So Franklin, I, and again, this is a lot of foreshadowing in, in this particular scene as just like there was at the, the Melanie, uh, Melanie uh, Andre scene, uh, scene at the gun range. Um, Alden basically tells him, you know, you kill a cop and they'll rain, you know, hell on this on the black community. Period. Uh, he's a former, of course. Alden is an ex Panther. He basically says, you know, those thoughts crossed our minds back in the day. Um, Franklin takes heed to this advice for now. <laughs> we'll, as we'll we will see what happens in the rest of the season, and you get this out. See, this is Alden really again knowing his son and also having the respect of his son from the standpoint of the fact that he out was a black man and has had a lot of experience in dealing with the cops and understanding the history of the cops. Both of these guys are extremely intelligent, well-read. And so they, you know, despite the many disagreements we've seen them have, they are on the same page when it came to this. Uh, so you had that. So that was a very, very powerful scene. Again, both actors, Kevin Carroll, who plays out, and of course, uh, Damps Ildris was, was spectacular in, uh, in this particular scene. MVP of this episode, I would say Melody. Uh, I, uh, Rain Edwards, who plays Melody, I thought from start to finish, especially in the scene with uh, Andre, I just thought that she was just tremendous. I thought, I thought her, she plays the concerned daughter slash rebellious girlfriend because it can be tricky because she's kind of in, in between Franklin and Andre. She's right in the middle of this war between these two characters and she's trying to play it carefully on both ends like being Karen Franklin with, without being completely disrespectful and rebellious and completely rebellious towards her father uh, and she, she does it. The actress of course Rain Edwards, you know, again, her just to buy, just her her tone, her, her her body language as far as what, you know how she deals with, especially in the last scene, um, when she you know she comes, she's comforted. She she questions her dad about why he did, why they did what they did, but then goes to Franklin, basically tells Franklin, "You need to quit." So again, she's in a she's in a very peculiar spot. She's right in the middle of it. Um. I thought she was the MVP. I, I really thought she was the MVP of this episode from the standpoint of, of that particular the scene with uh, Andre in particular. And even even the last scene when Franklin sends her away, uh, 
the place when Louis gets upset at Caesar, and then Frank when she asked when she asked Franklin to quit, um, he sends her away. She was great in that scene as well. So I thought I thought she was the MVP of this episode. That's gonna wrap it up for this latest edition of the Real Deal Podcast. I will be back with you for next episode for episode five, the bottoms, where we'll we will get I think introduced to a new character. Uh, that would that should be you know a lot will be a lot of fun um, talking about this particular character, but I will see you next time. Have a great great rest of your evening. So long.